Hello and welcome back to another brand new episode of Books with Not Just Free. In today's episode, I'm going to review another brand new book which I just finished reading this morning. And guess what? It's another Japanese book. So my obsession with Asian literature is not going away anytime soon. My TBR is now as some of you already know, is now full of Asian literature, most of these Japanese and Korean, and I'm progressing uh, through these uh, as uh, as the months go by. By the way, if you're new to my channel, then I'm Lebulina, and through this channel, I talk everything uh, that's related to books, uh, essentially TBRs, uh, book reviews, and well, anything under the sun that's to do with books and uh, authors. So without any further delay, why don't we get right into the book that I'm going to review today. So today's book is Before the Coffee Gets Cold, uh, and it's by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. And uh, as I said, this is a Japanese book, originally written in Japanese and then translated into English by Geoffrey uh, Trusolo. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't have a hard copy of the book. I read it on my beloved uh, Kindle. This book is about 213 pages uh, long, so it's a short book. The, the plot of the story is very unique. Before Coffee Gets Cold is set in a small cafe, actually in the basement of a building in probably Tokyo, although I don't remember if it's um, called out. And uh, the unique thing about this cafe is that you can actually travel back in time. Now, there are several rules that apply. Uh, two of the most important rules are that once you travel back, you cannot change the present. And the second is that once you travel back, you need to come back to the present before your coffee gets cold. So that's how the name of the book comes, Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it's something uh, unique to uh, Japanese literature, but I've seen uh, many of the books that I've started reading. I mean, of course, I'm going to put uh, Murakami completely aside because that's com that's a completely different genre. But all the authors, all the different authors that I have read so far um, for Japanese literature, I find a very unique streak, which means that many most of these uh, stories have a very simple plot, but a very unique plot. And uh, there are very less complexities involved, but there is a fluidity in the story and in the narration. And then um, the... I think the quality of the novels uh, truly lies in the simplicity of its narrative and the plot. Uh, I haven't read a lot of Japanese books, but uh, I think about five or six that I have read, I found this to be an um, underlying tone, uh, and I quite like that. In any case, there is this small little cafe. It has a very um, interesting name as well. I, I cannot really recall. Uh, Funicula Funiculi or something of that sort. Now, as I said at the beginning, it's just 213 pages long, so it's a very short uh, story. And um, there aren't too many characters in the in the story as well. I think there are at max maybe seven characters at most. The entire novel or story revolves around these seven characters. It starts from a very impersonal setting and then uh, it slowly becomes intimate enough and then towards the end you really get into the depth uh, of the character and the story so it begins shallow and then goes deep in most important rule for someone to use this cafe to go back in time is that although they are able to go back in time they cannot change the present given that most people would want to go back in time to actually change the present uh, it seems almost futile that why would anybody want to use, uh, why would anybody waste their time to go back in, go back into the past and then uh, just come back uh, to the present if they can't change the present. But what the author tries to tell through this analogy is that changing the present is not what is the most important thing. One, when you go back the past, you can change something else, which is much more important than changing the present. And no, it's most likely not what you're thinking. But I really liked that idea, which comes really towards the end of the book. The 
other very touching thing about this story is the fact that it's often quite predictable. Now, you might think that why would somebody like a story which is predictable? I don't know if it's making sense, but the reason I really liked it is because of uh, its predictability. It, it's almost an allegory of life. Is it the right term, allegory? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, well, anyways, but it's almost like a reflection of life, right? Where you do want a certain amount of certainty. You want to know what is going to happen and you're glad that that's what has happened. And it's almost like that, that story being predictable, you're glad that you were able to predict it and this is what is happening because that's, that's how true life is. I don't know if I'm really making sense, but uh, but that, that's the feeling that I that I really got from this uh, story. In any case, I have still rated it uh, four on Goodreads. I wanted to actually rate it three and a half, but then I decided to round it up and give it a four rating on Goodreads. The reason I wanted to rate it three and a half, despite the fact that it's a very neatly laid out plot and a very lucid narration, is the fact that uh, the, the way it is narrated is not very story-like. When you read the book, you would almost feel as if you're reading a play. And when I went, when I finished the book, I realized that this was actually adapted from a play, which makes sense because it's almost like a screenplay. And that's what might put you off a little bit because it just describes um, the scene too much as if you are watching a play. That sort of took away some of the imagination. And that is the reason why I sort of did not rate it as high as I would have liked to rate it. In any case, I would say that it's a great read. It's a very different read. I would highly recommend it for anyone who's looking for a short read, but still a refreshing read in a complete fiction genre. Again, before I uh, finish this video, I just want to thank all the translators out there. I've been telling this over and over in my videos um, that without the brilliant work that these translators are doing across the world, I would not have been able to read such brilliant books from across the world. Um, so thank you so much, guys. You, you, you guys are doing a wonderful job out there. Thank you. And last but not the least, if you did like the video, do like and share and do subscribe to my channel. It'll mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye for now.